Hello everyone and I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another fan to play fantasy match preview. This is for the game between the Stars and the Scorchers. Is the first of the double headers that's going to be played and we have Nikhil Bhai with us today to carry you through the preview and give you some insights on a venue where not too much of cricket has been played of late but will be interesting to see how it goes. One game has been played here. So please <laughs> make of it what you want to and uh, again the teams are very Crazy. Uh, Clark could have been out on one, but he got on to score a century because Shadab can't drop the catch and then the rest is history. And on the other side, you have a team that just loves to bowl. Uh, so, a game where you would want 10 bowlers, that is not possible. Even on Fantasy because you have to take two bowlers, two batters, sorry. So, yeah, let's see how uh, we can go ahead and make a safe or a sound based team, which is why you will see the difference when we talk to you about the game type and the risk level as well. So, yeah. Uh, that is the purpose behind starting those kind of sections for you as well, so that you also get an idea how we are thinking. But if you are sure, you can always and should always back your visualization. Yes, absolutely. So first up, let's hear about what we expect in short about the venue. Nikhil Bhai, uh, is this the game where should, we should have skipped this section or is there anything or any insights that you would like to give us as far as the junction over is concerned? Uh, I think as I said, it's 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 very, very tricky to uh, read two into one game because again, conditions could be completely off the board uh, in the next uh, set of games that are played here. 180 played 130 in that game. So I, you'd probably say that you want to pat first. 100% record there, but the sample that is very, very less. So, uh, hmm. again, I don't think we can... Uh, saying anything would be very unfair. Uh, so, I think we can just say that hopefully we get an even game. Uh, I do feel Pacers might be in the game just a bit more because of the quality of options that the two teams have. And, of course, you'll have Adam Zampa from one end, definitely part of the game. But, overall, I think Pacers should do well. Hopefully, we can even, uh, even deck and even game. Yes, absolutely. And uh, one reference point that you guys might be able to use are the WBBL scorecards and the few games yeah. that happened here. As far as WBBL, I think there were multiple games that happened here where yeah. spin seemed to prosper. But one thing that we'll also have to keep in mind is that for the women's games, the boundaries are slightly more pulled in. So we did see that few of the established batters, the international quality batters did prosper. But we saw the common thread with spin being able to do well. Whether that will happen here in the men's games or not is something that would be difficult to assume because of the fact that we do yeah. not know if the same pitches will be used. But yes, maybe that is one scenario for you to try as far as Grand Leagues are concerned. And let's look at what is the best possible base team. So, before we get to the base team, we'll speak about the risk factor of the game and the type of leagues that we can play for this one. So, Nikhil Bhai, uh, would you think of playing small leagues in this one or this is that typical game where you have to go with more combinations? Again, you saw risk high and that risk high definitely means mini GLs and GLs. Uh, again, we've discussed why. Uh, you can play small leagues when you are able to visualize or predict what is likely to be the outcome based on the conditions. Cricket has always been a condition-dependent game. Because we don't know much about conditions, I think you'll probably end up taking a bit more risk. You will be making a lot more assumptions. So, the risk level is high. And uh, I think mini gels and GLs might be the best possible way to go about. Make multiple combinations. You have to still back the players in form. So, form se must be But because conditions are quite a bit bit unknown, I think you would rather get a better return and investment back even if it doesn't go your way. Yes, absolutely. So, it's that sort of game where you want to capitalize fully on the leaderboards and make more yes. teams. And in the keeping section, we have gone with the Jays, Josh uh, Inglis and Joe Clark. Now, like Nikhil Bhai mentioned, one should have been out very early. The other one has been getting out relatively early. So, yes, maybe that's a sign that there is a chance that you might be able to leave either one of them if conditions are actually like how they were through the WBBL. And the two batters that we've gone in are Faf and Ashton Turner. Now, as far as the stars batting is concerned, there are quite a few batters, but not many of them play 
at the international level while when you look down at the scorchers bowling lineup it's full of bowlers that are of international quality so we're not too sure on how tack- how easy it would be for them to tackle and hence we have opted for the experience in the batting section yeah and again you see the common option in that give us josh is also dropped enough when he came good so again that is something which is not going to be in our control as viren said with stars you can easily back larkin cartwright whoever you feel will definitely come off but again the confidence level is not going to be too much it is not too much for us which is why the risk is high and which is why the selection is what it is but if the bat for shan you feel that scorchers because they are so strong with the ball you almost tend to at times be biased towards their bowling and you hope okay their bowling will come good and cover up for the batter so uh, i would rather take an extra bowler will give will give me 25 points as opposed to a batter who might have to do a lot more hard work against a better bowling unit so again that is how we think at times if you think differently and you think there's a clear option for you please go ahead and try that first yes absolutely and uh, the thing for you to keep in mind is the kind of assumptions and thought process for us work in that way that if it works 7 out of 10 times it's good enough there will yeah. be that two two or three or days where the unknown or the unexpected batter will come and play the big knock but that's not in our control we'll have to go towards the permutations combinations that are more likely to work on most days so yeah. don't be disappointed if it does not work on the odd day because still it's working majorly majorly that is what is important and we've gone with toynes and igar again with experience in the all rounders while in the bowlers we like we spoke a lot about the scorchers bowling so we have gone with jai as captain and there's no reason for you to opt away from that with the kind of form he's in bolt as vice captain he's going to be bowling against adam light who is known to play more than one shot uh, of a ball a short of ball rather and uh, that kind of approach is something bolt can get in, get into while faf is aging reflexes are slowing down and a left arm pacer against him is not going to be easy for him so hence bolt is vice captain Zampa and Kultnail are are the two picks. Kultnail or Berendorf, one of the two will go with whoever is bowling first, and Andrew Tai is the final bowler. Yeah, you see, th- this game doesn't have too many batting options that you will confidently say that okay, they will definitely come. Out. You can try Webster, you can try other options as well. But again, with Zampa and Agar, they are trying to cover up. If the deck spins, we have that covered. And if there are early wickets, you expect likes of. NCN and H Nagar to get enough time uh, with mm-hmm. the bat as well to contribute, and even a 25 might be handy here because they are also going to bowl. So uh, that is the logic that has gone with we've gone with so far. If we get any information, of course, post us always need to make those changes. And yeah, I don't think we'll find a game where you will be so confused about who else to make your captain, vice captain. Yes, as far as uh, playing grand leagues, that's a good confusion <laughs> for you to have. So let's hear what our options are in the next section. So Nikhil, why was our top bowlers already being common captain and vice captain? Why are grand league options for this one? Very, very tricky. I think uh, it's very difficult to say of even one name. Very confidently think that okay, this is my pick and they'll definitely contribute. But. because it's a game that i feel bowlers may dominate even a quick 30 with lots of boundaries could do the job for you so i'm going to go with adam knight uh, again it's purely a, a grand league call because again if he comes off get to those 35 40 runs with filled with boundaries might as well just become the differential that many people might still bring in so on other apps when you have to play three batters so yeah that is one option for you to try so that is the perth uh, bit is sorted if i'm right yeah so now mm-hmm. coming to stars very tempted to go with somebody like a uh, webster uh, but i'll rather stick with cartwright because i feel whenever i want i see some of the games that the big the big names are not playing sometimes cartwright just comes through uh, with a few very good performances so again no i'll not say i'm very confident about them but yeah it is what it is All right very fair calls and let's see very interesting to see how they will pan out to yeah. my two picks from first up from the scorchers is going to be peter zoglu i think yeah. with the amount that we have discussed the stars batting and the suspect you might see the fact that because they are 
much better players of pace in comparison to spin. They might just be able to get away with the pace and then someone like Hedzoglu comes in and takes something like a 3 for 40, especially if he's bowling second. So, that yeah. is a story that is playing in my mind. And the other one is Luke Wood. If he's bowling first, I think at the death he can be handy, especially because when you have someone like Bolt in your team, you want him to bowl three overs up front. And Colton Isle has been bowling most of the middle overs. So, Luke Wood is someone who can come in handy at the death. And again, with the Scorchers not having the quality of Marsh and Salt, that finishing order, while it might be doing well, is slightly inexperienced. So, Luke Wood can come in handy there. So... Mm-hmm. Pretty confident about these two picks. Let's see how <laughs> they go. I'm going to try them in my oh. mini GL teams for sure. And I mean, I yeah. I registered not save bowlers because they'd already given seven bowling options and said <laughs> that okay, is over all the bowler because I don't know how it'll go. But yeah, that's it is fine. But again, the thing is, Hodge will only pull one over last game, which may not always happen. So as I said, it's all going to be upon how you read the conditions and who you feel. Will come off much better as compared. Yeah, to it's it's strongly it's strongly based on the assumption that we might see something similar to the WBBL yeah. in terms of how the conditions are laid out. But uh, yeah, yes, let's see how that part of it goes. If we have any advanced information, will be helpful yes. for us to make a final call. But because 2022, I might be asking for too much. And on that note, we'll wrap up this one. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. We hope that you enjoy the double header. Have a great one. Yes, enjoy the Christmas.